Hello, this is Eric of NotBaos, and today's topic is gaming monitors. But not just gaming monitors itself, but widescreen, regular aspect ratio screens, curved, flat, VA, IPS. How to know the difference, what benefits it gives you for, say, movies, games, and high definition. This list will not include TN panels. Okay, let's hold on just a moment here. TN has its place and Zowie, or Zowie, however you pronounce it, has its place in the market made for eSports gamers that are competing for real money in real life. So let's go on the computer and check out these TN panels and get back to IPS and VA for gaming and all other purposes. But first, in the monitor we go. So the first thing you'll notice on the top of the page says BenQ. So Zowie is made by BenQ. It's their highest, highest range. They do make gaming mice as well. And if we go to the specs, you'll see it's 1080p, not anything major for 24.5 inches. But when you go to 27 inches, you expect that to be up to right. Well, if I go to the specs on this 27 inch right here, we see it's also 1080p. So if you're right up close to the computer monitor, you'll notice the images look a bit soft because it's 1080p. However, for the highest frame rate possible, you don't want 4K. You don't really want 1440p. You want a lower resolution, but still good enough you can see detail to get the higher frame rate. So if they can provide you that gaming edge and you're competing with money, that is what this TN panel is about. So this was an important thing to bring up if you're competing for money and a gamer. So these monitors that are TN might not exactly be best for movie watching. They're not necessarily made for complete accuracy, but they're made for people that are competing for real money in the gaming market. The resolution might not be what you're looking for because it's not the idea of having a high resolution to be sharp. It's having a low resolution to hit very high frame rates. And the reason why is TN panels are basically on their way out technology wise. However, there are still some very fast gaming panels. But in terms of color reproduction, quality, IPS and VA panels are more so the way to go and are more so with the future of gaming. Now let's get started. In terms of modern monitors, you have IPS, in-plane switching, and that was meant to replace TN panels, which is twisted pneumatic. Of course, the benefits of IPS is the fact of color reproduction, how the colors pop, and better viewing angles, far superior than TN film type panels. Of course, there's also VA, vertical alignment. And vertical alignment panels don't have very good viewing angles. They're somewhat similar to TN that way. So if you view them off access, the colors can look washed out. However, VA has better contrast than either TN or IPS, making it a great option for movie watching in general. However, it has its drawbacks, and that's generally in the dark tones, such as this monitor right here, which is the MSI MAG301CR2, where the dark tones look kind of compressed, and that is true for most VA panels altogether. So this is where you have your low cost, and you have your high end, and there's really extreme high end, and that is where your HDR comes in. Now to list off some panels for value, well, let's go to the entry level. So before we get to the cheap of the cheap panels for gaming, what are the main disadvantages or advantages? Well, the advantage of course is you get really good value for what you get. And generally they're acceptable, but you may have uh, more of little defects or compressed look in terms of your images because they're generally what you call B class panels rather than A class panels. It's generally a cheaper panel and when you get these cheaper panels, you're not gonna have the same quality as the best per se. They are acceptable, a little bit slower response times, might not be tuned as well, 
and they're not generally that bad. This is a cheap panel. So for an ultra wide, this 30 inch MSI MAG 301 CR2 is one of the best ultra wides you can get for the price for gaming, but it's the VA and it's kind of borderline. And if you're low frame rates, I would say unacceptable. So for another cheap monitor, but that's not ultra wide in VA is the Spectre C275B-1858 RN. And this panel of course is VA as well. That means it's not gonna be so hot for gaming either. Now, is there an IPS that's a really good value, good for gaming, and a really worthwhile option as far as games go? I give you the Gigabyte M27Q monitor. So this monitor is IPS, and it actually has a decent resolution. So in terms of monitors, you have your curved and you have your flat panels. What are the advantages of, say, a curved? Well, for viewing in front of the monitor, the advantage of curved can be the fact it surrounds your side vision more, so it gives you more of an immersive feel. However, there are curved screens that are just too small to make sense. Like, you can view a whole 27-inch screen, but yet there's a lot of models that are curved. And how can that have its drawbacks? Well, if it's a VA panel, you have limited viewing angles, so it makes that viewing angle that's limited all the worse. Also, sometimes a curve on a monitor can actually cause it so light actually reflect from one side to the other side or put a streak across it rather than being one little circle of light based on where it's actually hitting on the monitor. I'll have a video in the link below talking about curved monitors. But as soon as you have, say, a much of an aggressive curve, because it's gone now to a thousand R, and you're off to a little bit to the side, maybe you're with your other half, you'll have difficulty watching movies together, enjoying your time watching the screen together without being right in front of that screen. So a flat panel in general, especially if not large, is gonna be much better to have. Now, what I wanna get onto is mid-range. Mid-range, great gaming monitors. This is where things get really nice, where you actually have a great overall monitor without paying an arm and a leg, not specifically the highest refresh rate gaming, but the game very well. And you get some amazing value with these different monitors. This is from MSI with quantum dots. And the contrast ratio on this IPS is a little bit higher than normal, being at 1,100 sum to one versus the 1,000 to one, which you actually get usually on the best IPS, so a little bit higher contrast with quantum dots bringing forth the color tones. You get more vibrancy, so that's the best way to say it. But of course, one situation you have, well, can have, is color oversaturation, as can be found in, well, LG's panel as well. That's where you go to sRGB in a lot of the different panels, which I don't believe that MSI has that, but if you're going to say the LG Nano series, for example, sRGB and the ASUS panels are tuned. So you have a lockdown. Some people find it very dull. So your mileage will vary. The MSI Optics MAG274QRF-QD, quantum dot. So this monitor is amazing value for what you're getting. The thing is, You'll want to tune it and do a little bit of changes if you actually mind that oversaturation. So that's one of the biggest comments I found when looking at reviews that the colors are not great out of the box, but if you can tune it, you have a really good gaming monitor for the price. And of course, we might have heard about the LG Nano series. So the 27GP850, I actually reviewed the 27 GL850, that's 2019 model. The GP series is the 2021 model. So these are really great value, fairly high refresh rate gaming monitors. Very well, worth your money. The contrast ratio is a bit low on a lot of these different monitors. 34 GP950 GB from LG. So above 144 Hertz, you lose your 10 bit capability on that monitor. So if you want the highest refresh rate, the highest 
best gaming experience possible? Well, clock it up to 180 hertz. This is the ASUS ROG Strix XG349C. It is based on the same coverage of P3 at 98%. It also is 10-bit up to 144 hertz and lowers down to 8-bit past that with its overclock up to 180 hertz. So this is a great panel for actual video editing and photo editing. For something mid to kind of highish end range, I'd recommend if you want a VA for the Samsung G7 series monitor. The 27 or 32 inch is up to you. However, they're the same resolution. So what does it mean when you get the higher, let's say, well, the same resolution, you get wider. It means you decrease the pixel density, which means images will look sharper in that 27 inch versus the 32 inch. Azu Strix XG27 AQM. It's a 27 inch panel, 270 hertz IPS. Not bad. This particular one is quite expensive. It is 1440p, but you're looking about seven to eight hundred dollars American. It's tuned by ASUS to actually be pretty decent for actually doing photo and other work. There are some 360 hertz panels that can actually do it properly where it doesn't fully refresh up to that 360 hertz. So you actually lose some image quality and you have to drop down. How does that make sense? It doesn't. But of course, it's a specification and checkbox. So we've got to be mindful of those certain situations. On the topic of 360 hertz and not keeping up, well, let's talk about the ASUS PG259QN. So what's the situation? Well, it can't do all transitions within that 360 hertz window. So you might want to be able to lock it down to 300 hertz using a custom refresh rate and actually save yourself or drop down to 240 hertz. Of course, then what's the point? I'm going to have a link below to Hardware in a Box's review, as well as Optimum Tech, why he switched from 360 hertz down to 240 hertz using the same monitor. However, eventually monitors will be able to keep up with 360 hertz and all transitions. You could use extreme mode, but of course what happens is extreme overshoot. So you get that bright blue color or bright tone behind it. So it's like an inverse ghosting, not a situation you want. So a regular ratio screen, pretty much all YouTube content is made for that. When you get to say an ultra wide, which I have in front of me, you'll have black bars on the side. However, you'll see on that occasion that a regular size screen will have black bars on the top and bottom. So having an ultra wide, you won't you're likely not to have those black bars on top and bottom at all. When it's full screen, it gives you a better view of the corners of the movies, so you can actually see more what's happening on the stage, but an ultra wide helps greatly for most games. For instance, if you're playing a shooting game and someone's shooting at you and you're looking around on a regular size monitor, you'll have a little more difficulty spotting that person right away. Well, on an ultra wide, you have that much more space and that much more space. It's almost like you have an extra, look for the instance on this screen, it's almost like I have almost an extra eight or 10 inches. And if you have a 35 inch screen, it's almost like an extra foot of viewing. And racing car games, you might feel, I can't really see where I'm going when you turn the next turn. That gives you more viewing here on a racing car game. And of course a game where you're actually in a flat plane where you might have little hills, not a big issue. And for me, that helps me greatly when playing games over other people. However, our selection of ultra wide is somewhat limited. And of course you have to consider the content. If I were adding video an ultra wide can be kind of nice. That's a longer timeline, but in general, what matters more is the height this way, because then you have to add many layers. That's when having a taller screen can actually be beneficial. Now for console gaming, Acer has a monitor which is XB323K. So this one's actually made for console gaming. It might not have a display port. In fact, it's not even out yet. HDMI 2.1, 144 hertz, 
4K resolution, so it'll actually be good for PC gaming as well, if you don't mind using HDMI 2.1. It actually is HDR scale for 600 lumens, so this is brighter, so if they actually add black frame insertion, it actually won't be very dim. Kind of a bright idea having that much brightness. And how about for large screen monitors? Well, Gigabyte has the Aorus F048U. So this one has HDMI 2.1, so it'll be great for console gaming or great for PC. It's an OLED, organic light emitting diode. It means you have basically an infinite black to infinite white contrast ratio, at least 100,000 to one settings you could put like pixel shift and such. But a lot of people find it interferes with image quality. So things to avoid burn-in actually for gaming can be a bit distracting, especially with fine text where you get kind of a perceived blur. OLED is a technology beyond VA, IPS, or TN panels. And technically it has a much faster response time than any other technology, meaning the pixels are done transitioning now. So it's a technology that most people want for gaming. If of course OLED could avoid burn-in and other things that happen, it could be the way to go. So with this gigabyte panel, there's a few things to note. 98% of the DCI P3 coverage, 130% of sRGB 4K. It is 135 thousand to one contrast ratio, 10 bit color display, 120 hertz. It has an HDMI 2.1 port, two of them, one display port, 1.4 version. And the speakers are 15 watts times two, plus a 20 watt, I believe, subwoofer. So actually you should have decent sound built into the computer screen itself at a price of about $1,500 American. You can always check a place like Artings. I'll leave the actual link to that site where you can actually look at the reviews and testing specifications of those monitors. Which type of monitor is actually good for HDR content? Well, for one, for proper HDR content, you want high brightness. An actual HDR, true HDR, is considered a thousand nits or better brightness. And that means anything that's affordable Anything that's basically under $1,000 is not acceptable or very much lacking. There are games that are not truly HDR. For instance, Doom Eternal. It seems that Doom Eternal itself just gives a better rendering path to make the game look, well, the textures look better. In fact, I think the game should look like it does in HDR without it calling it HDR. Now for one panel that is absolutely extreme. Great for HDR, pretty good for gaming, but it's true 10-bit, which means it's a little bit slower. But of course, it'll be great for movie watching. Almost any purpose, a great, amazing, all-around monitor. But a 3000 USD for only 32 inches? That's a bit of a hard pill to swallow. But let's get on with this. This is the ASUS PG32UQX, but spec-wise, it's pretty impressive. So this is Quantum Dot with local dimming, 1,152 independent zones of lighting, allowing this IPS, that's normally a thousand one contrast ratio, to reach 50,000 plus contrast. That's higher than any VA panel can go. And being the IPS, that means it's fast, but it's 10-bit color, true, I believe, true 10-bit. So this means it has more processing, so it means, it means it's a little bit slower gaming. It's very acceptable for gaming. Movie watching, that's awe-inspiring. Like, that's beautiful. HDR gaming, you will love how bright the brights can get versus how dark scenes can get. It gives you a really lively feeling. It's one of those things that give you like shivers. A movie with a flashlight, you can expect it to hurt your eyes as if you had a flashlight shine your eyes. So that's immersion to the next level. 4K, 32 inch, so you'll need a very powerful graphics card to drive 
that frame rate brings home the idea of your computer's going to cost a lot. It's not going to be a three thousand dollar computer. The screen's three thousand. You're talking about if you want an ultimate gaming experience, you might be literally spending eight thousand dollars. You'll have to think about like for this generation right now in 2021, a 3090 or 3080 Ti at least, or AMD's fastest graphics card possible. Yeah, and even that won't crank this thing to the max. So how about for photo editing? Well, that ASUS panel here, it is very good for photo editing and video editing. You have accurate colors. It's not a matter of, is it okay? It's a matter of, yes, get it, because it's that good. And now for a roundup of my top picks. I'm gonna give the weaknesses and strengths of each one, listing the rating for games, movies, video editing, HDR, on a scale of one to five, where five is the best, three is okay, but one or two is basically a void. So I'm gonna mention the weaknesses and strengths and why it's good for a certain thing. Now let's get on with this roundup. This is Eric of Not Bios. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video to help this channel grow. Leave your comments below of different monitors I may not have mentioned that may be a good choice. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. This is Not Bios. Tech and high.